Hello my lovelies, I hope you're all well. Today we're going to be delving into some of the spooky, slightly creepy stories um, from my hometown. first story I first heard about when I was a young girl and my mother was working as a volunteer at the Stevenage Museum. So if you don't know anything about Stevenage, it's a post-war town in the southeast of England. I was born and raised in Stevenage but I moved away when at 18 I joined the Royal Air Force. The original old town of Stevenage dates back to uh, Doomsday actually, it's in the Doomsday book. I believe it uh, was the village of Sheppel that appears in the Doomsday Book. So it's a very old place with a lot of history. So the first story is about an eccentric grocer called Henry Trigg. He lived and worked in Stevenage Old Town in the early 1700s. At this time there was a big problem with grave robbers and uh, so-called resurrection men and the thought of his remains being disturbed really upset Henry Trigg so he thought up this uh, rather wacky solution. He added a proviso to his will in that his body would remain in a lead-lined coffin in the rafters of the barn that he owned for a minimum of 30 years. Henry Trigg died in 1724 and his brother complied with the request. Henry Trigg's remains were placed in the roof of the barn as you can see in this image and remained there for a very long time. Unfortunately for Henry Trigg, the infamy around his plan um, actually led souvenir hunters to him and when the coffin was removed in the early 1900s um, they found that about a third of his remains were actually missing and it seemed that um, souvenir hunters and rather macabre people were taking bones home for souvenirs. Now obviously there have been rumours that Mr Trigg is not at rest which wouldn't surprise me considering that some of his bones were taken and a phantom figure has been seen walking the building. So this next story, not really a story, uh, this next site that we're going to look at is actually um, some burial mounds that date from as early as AD 100. Probably one of the most famous landmarks in Stevenage. It's six burial grounds along a road known as Six Hills Way. I actually used to live near this road. The burial grounds themselves are believed to be Roman burial grounds. There have been stories of misfortune befalling people who have tried to dig up the mounds. Tales of ghostly dogs and phantom hounds have been seen circling the mounds. In 1910, a lady described a phantom hound as big as a donkey rising out of the ground at the mounds. A local groundskeeper also is alleged to have seen these phantom dogs. There have also been sightings of a blood-stained man walking around the area. Third site is actually a pub, and it's a pub I've been to. <laughs> Originally called the White Lion, it has been renamed. It was renamed in 2015 to the Mulberry Tree. I haven't been in there since then, by the way. The current building dates from the 18th century, although a coaching inn existed on the site before then. During the Napoleonic Wars, French POWs were housed there, believed to be in a tunnel which connected the White Lion public house with the Cromwell Hotel down the road. Managers and bar staff have reported many ghostly goings on over the years. Sounds of footsteps, scratching, strange rustling noises, together with banging and crashing sounds have been heard around the premises. In uh, 2014, a glowing white shape was caught on CCTV. To the south of Stevenage Town Centre is a wooded area known as Monk's Wood. 
There were rumours that there was a monastery on this site, although there's no historical evidence to back this up. Up until the dissolution of the monasteries under the reign of Henry VIII, the manor of Sheppel, which is this beautiful old manor house, was administered by the Byzantine monks of St Albans, which is a, there's a massive cathedral in St Albans, which is a town nearby. Many people have claimed to have seen a black draped apparition of a monk walking around the um, pond area within the woods. I used to go there when I was a teenager with my friends and try and ghost hunt. So that's just a few of the local historic sites around my hometown of Stevenage that have a bit of a creepy backstory to them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon.